Welcome back to Learn Neuroradiology. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the less common low-grade tumors that you can see within the brain. Some of the less common low-grade tumors that you're going to see have common characteristics. They tend to be smaller, they tend to have better defined margins, they tend to affect younger patients, and most commonly they'll be, uh, like I said, lower grade. Some examples of tumors such as this are pilocytic gastrocytoma, DNET or dysembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor, ganglioglioma's, and pleomorphic xanthoastrocytomas, or PXA. We'll start with a case of a 48-year-old with fainting and episodes of nausea and vomiting. Here we have a T2 image from about the level of the lower brainstem, so kind of the pontomedullary junction. You see a T2 hyperintense at least partially cystic mass along the left aspect of the fourth ventricular outflow tract. On diffusion, you see not much going on, so not much uh, brightness there, so nothing to tell you that this is a very cellular tumor. Here you have the pre and post contrast images from this study. On pre contrast, you see a relatively well marginated T2 hypo intense mass, so it's less intense than the surrounding cerebellum or surrounding brainstem. On post-contrast imaging, you do have some enhancement. You've got a little nodular area of enhancement here along the medial aspect of this tumor. What we're dealing with in this case is a pilocytic astrocytoma. These are the most common pediatric primary brain tumors. This is a grade one WHO tumor. It has a very uh, excellent 10-year survival of about 94%. The most common locations you'll see them are in the cerebellum along the optic nerve or along the optic chiasm. In pediatric patients, they definitely tend to be more located in the posterior fossa. That's the classic location. And then classically, you'll hear about a cystic lesion. Uh, that's the primary lesion that has an avidly enhancing mural nodule. You can definitely have solid enhancement like you saw in this case. For our second case, we have an 18-year-old woman with seizure. On the left, we have a T2 weighted image. You'll see in the left posterior temporal lobe, there's a well-marginated lesion in the posterior temporal cortex. Uh, here you see it's a relatively well-marginated. It's very bright on T2. On flare, it's quite difficult to even appreciate this lesion. What you see is a kind of ill-defined cortex here in the posterior temporal lobe here, right at the inferior parietal lobe. Here you have pre- and post-contrast imaging. It's a little bit easier to see. You have a T1 hypo-intense mass along the cortex. You have maybe a thin little linear bit of enhancement versus a small vessel. What you're dealing with in this case is a DNET, or dysembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor. These are benign, slow-growing tumors. They most often occur in the cortical gray matter. The temporal lobe, uh, particularly the anterior temporal lobe, amygdala and hippocampus are very common locations. The classic description that you'll hear is these are bubbly cystic lesions. So if you see a bubbly cystic lesion in the temporal lobe, think about a DNET. It's rare to have hemorrhage and enhancement. You can have a little bit of enhancement like you saw in this case, but it's rare to have much more than that. Our next case is a 20-year-old woman with seizure. So you see a developing trend here. A lot of these patients have seizures. On the left, we have a pre-contrast T1 weighted image. What you see in the posterior hippocampus and medial temporal lobe along the ventricle, you see this well-defined T1 hypotense lesion. This is post-contrast imaging. What you see is the same lesion. Not much uh, going on in that cystic region, but you see some ill-defined enhancement around it, maybe a few little patches of enhancement. On flare, what you have is a kind of iso-intense mass with a little bit of gliosis or edema surrounding it. Here you just see some more images of the same thing. Here you have a T2 coronal image. Uh, this gives you an idea of the location of this mass, the posterior perihippocampal gyrus. And then you see it's very well defined as a cystic area. Here on flare, it's rather sort of difficult to appreciate. It probably involves a little bit more of the surrounding area. You may have some abnormal cortex adjacent to it. And then on post-contrast imaging, it's predominantly non-enhancing, although it has a little bit of enhancement along the medial aspect there. This lesion is a ganglioglioma. Gangliogliomas are mixed tumors. They have partial neuronal components and partial glial components. These are grade one tumors. Much like DNETs, they tend to be cystic masses and can have an enhancing nodule. 
they are more likely to enhance than DNET. So if you see a mass and you're weighing like whether it's a DNET or ganglioglioma, then you might consider it as a ganglioglioma if it enhances more. However, it doesn't really matter because the differential is very similar for those lesions. So you aren't necessarily going to be able to tell the difference. These are most common in children and young adults. So you'll see them in the teenagers and people in their 20s. Uh, these are treated by resection. If you take them out, it's completely curative. Finally, we have a 26-year-old woman. Uh, she just had a child, and now she's having altered consciousness, maybe seizures. Here you have a CT. What do you see is a mass. On uh, the right cerebral hemisphere here, you've got a lot of edema. You have some central, maybe calcification. This is a slice just from a different level. You see, again, a relatively solid-looking component with some edema surrounding it. Maybe pretty well-defined margins. A little bit of mass effect, but it's not crazy. Here's some MR images from the same patient. Uh, here you have diffusion. Uh, you see a relatively well-defined component here with some adjacent uh, cystic components going up to the dural margin. On T2, you have similar findings. These components look very solid with intermixed cystic kind of multilobular components and some surrounding edema. Flare simply confirms that appearance, but you have pretty well-defined flare around it and this well-defined mass here with surrounding flare. For the size of the mass, you'll note that there's not uh, nearly as much mass effect as some of the other lesions. So that makes you think this is probably a slow progressing process. Here you see the pre and post contrast imaging. So it has areas that are iso intense to hypo intense. The cystic areas, of course, are hypo intense. Then on post contrast imaging, you have uh, avid enhancement of components of the central mass here. You also have this. Uh, dural component, which is kind of thick and enhancing maybe a little bit of a dural tail, which is a bit of a classic finding for this lesion. The coronal post-contrast imaging just confirms what we saw before, dense central enhancement with a surrounding cystic area. Here you see uh, this is just some DSC perfusion of this lesion. What you see is a relative hyperperfusion centrally, not uh, super hyperperfused, but just a little bit. And uh, then this is just to show you uh, that area centrally. So it's not too cellular, but it is relatively hyperperfused. This is a pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma. These are rare, uh, usually benign tumors that are grade 2 tumors. Again, like these other tumors, they tend to occur in children and young adults. Most commonly, they're supratentorial, involving the superficial cortex, particularly in the temporal lobes. They tend to be round to oval, they'll have cystic components, and as I mentioned, one of the characteristic components is that dural tail that we saw. We definitely saw a big enhancing nodule in this lesion. So to summarize these less common low-grade tumors, uh, here on the left we have the pilocytic astrocytoma we saw, which was a posterior fossa lesion, cystic components, and an enhancing nodule. Here we have a V-net, which was a peripheral cortical-based lesion, kind of cystic and bubbly appearing, not much enhancement. Here we have a ganglioglioma. This one has a little bit more enhancement, but a similar cystic lesion, similar cortical location. And finally, we have a pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma, which is a bigger lesion. You know, we've got pretty avid enhancement of some of the solid components, a lot of cystic components. And here you see that dural tail that we were just talking about. In general, when you're making a differential diagnosis for these low-grade tumors, remember that they can look the same. There may be a few features that help you differentiate. If you have an enhancing nodule, think about pilocytic astrocytoma, PXA, or ganglioglioma. The minimal enhancement bubbly appearance ones favor DNET, but in reality, you may be putting all of them in your differential, and it probably doesn't matter because the treatment for these is surgical resection. They all have relatively good outcomes, so you're not always going to be right, but you're going to lead to the appropriate clinical treatment. Thanks for watching this video. Up next, we'll talk about some of the common non-glial tumors in the brain, uh, such as lymphoma, meningiomas. If you enjoyed this video, check out our channel by subscribing, and uh, take a look at our other information at learnerradiology.com.